YouTube channel. The attacks by Yemen's Iranian-backed Houthi rebels, who targeted ships in the Red Sea and disrupted one of the world's most important shipping routes, could unleash a new crisis in which the terrorist organization Hamas's war with Israel could trigger another chaos beyond supporting Hamas and its administrative areas. Since the start of the Israeli-Hamas war in October, the Houthis have been harassing ships in the neighboring Red Sea, especially U.S. and British ships, as well as ships they believe are heading to Israel. The Red Sea attacks led shipping companies to redirect their ships to the southern tip of Africa. It was a longer and more costly journey. The U.S. is leading a naval task force in the Red Sea to help combat the Houthi threat. In mid-January, U.S. and U.K. forces began airstrikes on Houthi targets in Yemen, leading rebels to say that all U.S. and British interests are now legitimate targets. On January 28th, a drone struck U.S. forces stationed in northeastern Jordan near the Syrian border, causing the first confirmed American deaths in an enemy attack since Israel and Hamas entered the war. The U.S. blamed the attack on an umbrella group of Iranian-affiliated militias in Syria and Iraq calling itself the Islamic Resistance. It also includes the Kataib Hezbollah group, which a few days later said it had suspended military operations in Iraq after pressure from the Iraqi government. In retaliatory strikes, the U.S. struck 85 targets at seven locations linked to Iranian-funded militant groups and the Quds Force, the wing of the country's elite Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, IRGC, that focuses on foreign operations, according to U.S. officials. More than 125 precision munitions were used in the airstrikes, during which more than 85 targets were destroyed. The facilities hit included command and control operations centers, intelligence centers, depots of rockets and missiles, drones and logistics and ammunition supply chain facilities of militia groups and their revolutionary guard sponsors that facilitated attacks on U.S. and coalition forces. A large number of aircraft, including long-range B-1 bombers flying from the United States, marked the opening of a salvo of retaliation for the drone strike that killed three U.S. soldiers in Jordan last weekend. Iraq's popular mobilization forces, a state security force that includes Iranian-backed groups, said 16 of its members were killed, including fighters and paramedics. The government had earlier said 16 people had been killed and 23 wounded, including members of a terrorist organization and those found to have links to the terrorist organization. The Britain-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights reported that 23 people were killed in Syria, bringing the total number killed in both countries to 39. The U.S. Central Command said in a statement, U.S. Central Command, CENTCOM, forces conducted airstrikes against Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, IRGC, Quds Force, and militia groups affiliated with it in Iraq and Syria. The attacks targeted command and control operations, intelligence centers, rockets and missiles, drone depots, and logistics and ammunition supply chain facilities. U.S. Leyte General Douglas Sims, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, said the strikes appeared successful, triggering large secondary explosions when bombs hit militant weapons. President Joe Biden and other top U.S. leaders have been warning for days that the country will retaliate against the militias, making it clear that this will not be just a single strike, but a gradual response over time. The United States is not looking for conflict in the Middle East or anywhere else in the world, Biden said. But those who want to harm us should know this. If you harm an American, we will retaliate. On Saturday, a spokesman for the UK government said it supports America's right to respond to the attacks. We have long condemned Iran's destabilizing activities throughout the region including its political, financial, and military support for certain militant groups, the statement said. The Islamic resistance in Iraq, a coalition of Iranian-backed militias that the United States blames for the deadly attack in Jordan, has carried out more than 160 attacks on bases hosting U.S. troops in Iraq and Syria since Oct. 7, amid tensions stemming from U.S. support for Jordan. The other day, 
President Biden accused Iran of supplying weapons to militant groups that continue the offensive and said he had decided how to respond, but did not provide further details. But in the days since the attack, there have been no public actions, and a reporter asked Kirby if the White House had missed an opportunity to signal resolve. At the White House's daily press briefing, Kirby said, I think we've signaled a resolution pretty well. As I said the other day, we will respond in our own time, on our own schedule, and we will do it, he said. On Friday, the U.S. military launched airstrikes on dozens of sites in Iraq and Syria used by Iranian-backed militias and the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, IRGC. U.S. troops were in Jordan last weekend. U.S. President Joe Biden said in a statement, the United States does not seek conflict in the Middle East or anywhere else in the world. But those who want to harm us should know this. If you harm an American, we will respond. Biden and other top U.S. leaders have been warning for days that America would retaliate against the militias, making it clear that it would not be just a single strike, but a gradual response over time. Biden reiterated this point in his statement, saying, our reaction began today. It will continue at times and places to be determined by us. The massive barrage of attacks hit more than 85 targets at seven locations, including command and control headquarters, intelligence centers, rockets and missiles, drone and ammunition storage areas, and other facilities affiliated with the militia or the Quds Force of the Revolutionary Guards, the unit that manages Tehran's relations with regional militias and their arming. While the U.S. has sought to prevent further escalation of the conflict, U.S. strikes appear to be insufficient to directly target Iran or senior leaders of the IRGC's Quds Force within its borders. National Security Council spokesman John Kirby said the targets were carefully selected to avoid civilian casualties and are based on clear, irrefutable evidence that they are linked to attacks on U.S. personnel in the region. He declined to elaborate on what that evidence was. Chief of Staff Latir Jenin Douglas Sims said the strikes took place in about 30 minutes and that three of those hit were in Iraq and four in Syria. The U.S. Central Command said more than 125 precision munitions were used in the attacks and they were carried out by a large number of aircraft, including long-range B-1 bombers flying from the United States. Sims said the weather was also a factor when planning strikes to allow the U.S. to verify that it was hitting the right targets and avoiding civilian casualties. We know that there are militants, IRGC and Iranian-linked militia group personnel who use these places, Sims said. We carried out these attacks tonight with the idea that there would probably be deaths related to people in these facilities. Two Iraqi militia officials who spoke on condition of anonymity because they were not authorized to meet with journalists said three houses in the Iraqi city of Al Qaim, which were used as headquarters, including a weapons storage area, were targeted. The Popular Mobilization Forces, a coalition of Iranian backed militias, targeted its operations center and weapons depots in the Iraqi city of Akashat. Biden said the response will continue at times and places of our choosing, while Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said the president is directing additional actions to hold the IRGC and its militias accountable. Katab Hezbollah, one of the main pro-Iranian groups in Iraq, said Tuesday it would halt its attacks on U.S. troops, but U.S. officials said they would continue to retaliate and judge militants by deeds rather than words. Prior to Oct 7, Attacks on U.S. forces had almost come to a halt after quiet talks between U.S. and Iranian officials. Many U.S. experts believe that Iran's clerical state is not seeking a broader confrontation with the more powerful United States, but is also enjoying new support in the Arab world instead of support for Hamas. So, what do you think about this? Please let us know what you think in the comments. In order to be informed about new videos, please do not forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. Thank you for tuning in.